Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I am so excited that you're here today. And if you listened to last week's podcast, you know that I had a special something that I was not able to share with you at that time. But today I am able to share it with you. So I'm super excited to announce that I will be giving two TEDx speeches, one in 2020 in October and one in 2021. If you're not familiar with TEDx, TEDx is a worldwide organization that helps educate and inspire ideas worth spreading. This, you know, TEDx was not like even on my radar of things like a bucket list or anything like that, but I started meeting a bunch of great women who were just doing awesome things in their own realm. Um, And I was like, they were all TEDx speakers. And I was like, hmm, very interesting. (laughs) So I applied and I got in. So this October, we are going to be doing a virtual TEDx talk. And the talk that I'm going to be giving is, Is Your Chair Making You Sick? Sitting with Dis-Ease. And this talk is going to be about sitting at your desk. You know, originally sitting was like a great idea and it made our work much easier, but now at what cost? Like we sit all the time and our bodies were really meant to move and sitting can cause numerous issues that could decrease our quality of life. My talk is going to be based on that. And also I'll be sharing some chair stretches on the TEDx platform. Go to this podcast show notes link and you will be able to find the TEDx information. You can find out how to access the virtual event next year will be hopefully live if COVID cooperates, right? (laughs) So next year in October in Cape May, New Jersey, I will be stepping on the TEDx stage down there and doing a different talk. So I will leave the link in the show notes. You can definitely check it out. I would love for you to come and watch the virtual talk and get some great tips on how to keep moving when you're stuck in that chair, because especially now that, well, you know, I know we are getting out and it's a little bit more open, but Still, there are virtual meetings going on. Still, there's a lot of sitting. And even before COVID, there was a lot of sitting. So definitely check that out. And I am so excited to be able to announce that to you today. And I hope you will check it out. On today's topic for the podcast, I'm going to be talking about 10 fitness trends that you need to ditch. What brought this up is I saw an article on health and fitness trends. And holy cow, if it didn't hit me with some red flags coming from the physical therapy background and ballet background, like some of the stuff you just should not be doing. (laughs) Unless you're like an athlete and a circus performer, I guess is what I want to say. But, you know, if you're over 40 and you're just looking to lose weight and live a healthier lifestyle and have high quality function daily activities, daily life. And I think that's what we mostly want because after 40, you know, we start thinking about what's going to happen in our 60s or 70s or 80s, hopefully 90s. And through those years, those decades, we want to make sure the quality of our life is key, right? We don't necessarily need to be flipping tires or, you know, flipping cars, that kind of thing. Okay, so here are the top 10 fitness trends to leave behind. One, working out just to burn calories. Two, copying celebrity Instagram workouts. Three, doing single exercise challenges, in quotes, challenges. Number four, thinking lifting weights will make you bulky. Number five, going hard for every workout and never taking a day off. Number six, Believing workouts will lengthen your muscles. Number seven, doing one size fits all workouts. Number eight, using a waist trainer to slim your core. Number nine, pairing exercise with booze. Number 10, taking heated cardio classes. Okay, so I'm going to break down each one of those and I'm going to give you my professional opinion on which fitness trends you need to ditch. So the first one, working out just to burn calories. With all the wearables, apps, and fitness equipment that give us tons of data, number of steps, food logging, scales, body fat percentage, calorie burn, your exercise 
calorie burn, your heart rate, taking time to breathe. Yes, this is all awesome information, as long as you're using it for good. But, but if you are exercising just to burn off the double mocha chocolate triple caramel latte coffee muffin that you just devoured, then you're approaching your fitness in a detrimental way. If you continue to trade calories for calorie burn's sake, you will get caught up in a vicious cycle of overeating, then overexercising to burn off, quote unquote, the overconsumption that you had. This is different than understanding calories in versus calories out. If you are exercising to punish yourself for overeating, then you will never keep the weight off. It will be an ongoing spin. Next one, copying celebrity Instagram workouts. Just because it works for one person does not mean it will work for everyone. When you're ogling these workouts, you don't have the full picture. What is the celebrity's health history? Are you getting the whole story? Do they have an eating disorder? Are they eating barely enough to sustain themselves so they get through whatever movie or show that they're getting shredded for? And this one is key. Do they maintain this look afterwards? This even applies to like your friends and family members who go on these crazy quick fix diets and they lose 15 pounds in, you know, two weeks. Yes, they're getting results quicker, but their body is not catching up or even more important is their brain is not catching up. You need to kind of mentally do a clean slate wiping of your brain and how you think about food in order to make it a lasting change. This is what I do with my clients. When they come to me, we work on definitely nutrition and exercise, but the mindset is like the missing piece. That is the key to all this. I don't know if you watched Will and Grace back in the day, but there is a funny Will and Grace episode where Grace is stalking this lady named Carol in their gym. And Carol has hired a trainer and Grace, not wanting to invest in hiring a trainer, just follows them around like she's lurking behind equipment following along with the trainer's workout. The trainer notices her and calls her out on doing the workout. And Grace taunts the trainer and says he's not a good trainer because she hasn't noticed any changes in her body except for that her butt has gotten bigger. And the trainer then states that's because the workout was designed to make Carol's butt bigger and her chest smaller. I will leave the clip in the show notes if you want to watch it. But as a trainer, I mean, it's humorous by itself, but it's, it's really true. <laughs> when I design my workouts for my clients, they are designed specifically for what they need. So everybody needs a different workout. And not just only on your physical stature or what your goals are, but there's also the fact of like, what's your health history? Do you have injuries? How is your technique? There's so many factors involved that you need a trainer to design your workout for you. So it's the most effective workout that you can do and get the results that you want. So again, that is why I don't give generic workouts. Everything is customized for my clients. So yeah, the Will and Grace thing is a clip of a TV show, but how many times have you followed a generic program and either not seen the results you want or you get the results, but you aren't able to keep them? Next one is doing single exercise challenges. Okay, so this one doesn't bother me too much except for when it's super extreme. If you wanna do a plank for a month to quote unquote jumpstart your fitness, then go for it. Just make sure your form is good. Interested in learning how to do a plank correctly? I have a video, so you can definitely check that out on my YouTube channel. I'll also leave it in the show notes. But this also comes under the get a customized program designed for you. Maybe doing 5,000 burpees is not good if you don't know that you have a herniated disc. You need a qualified person to do a health history with you and find out what is appropriate for your body. And maybe if your goal is to do 5,000 burpees, you want somebody that's going to walk you through the process, not just some sheet that tells you you need to do, you know, 1,000 burpees on this day and 1,000 on this day. So make sure you get a customized plan for you. The next one, thinking lifting will make you bulky. Okay, 
this trend or myth needs to die a quick death. <laughs> this myth has desperately been trying to stick around for years and it's just not true. And as women over 40, you need to be lifting some sort of weights or some sort of resistance training, whether that's body resistance or weight training. And the reason is, is because osteoporosis and osteopenia is going to start creeping in as we get older. And weight training is a huge factor for building bones and building those bones stronger. So I am all for lifting weights. Now you don't have to lift like super heavy, heavy weights. Power lifting is a great way to exercise, but unless you want to be a power lifter, women over 40 do not need to do those extreme movements to get lean. There are many extreme workouts that just put your joints in bad positions and open you up to injury. You can still get fit and make your body last, but you definitely, again, this is where the customization comes in. So here's an example. I have a client who used to come to my boot camp classes about 10 years ago, and she would only use five pound dumbbells. I could not convince her to use anything heavier. When I stopped doing boot camp classes and I phased into a different area in my business and I didn't see her for a while, then she came back to work with me and is lifting 20 pound dumbbells in shoulder presses. And five pound weights are like nothing for her. She is so strong and so much healthier than she's ever been. She is not bulky by any stretch of the imagination. She is not quote unquote beefy looking. In order to really get that toned look, ladies, you need to lift heavier weights. So for sure, this is one of the fitness trends that needs to get ditched. So the next one, going hard for every workout and never taking a day off. I think this is important for everyone, but especially women over 40. This does not mean that you can't do something every day like to have an active recovery day, which might mean a casual walk, Pilates, or yoga, a day for your body to rest and recoup. Part of the process of weight training is you need to incorporate rest. Rest is actually part of the program. <laughs> so you need to take those days where you are just not laying around on the couch all day, but just doing low level activities, stretching, moving your body, staying active, but not lifting weights or not doing a hard, you know, cardio workout or anything like that. So you need to take advantage of your workout or your rest days. Believing workouts will lengthen your muscles. So when I hear quote unquote, lengthening your muscles, I envision a ballet dancer. Maybe you do too, or a Victoria's Secrets model. This is where having an educated trainer comes in handy. What do you want to look like and what is your body structure? So once I know what your goals are and we go through a health history, then I know what type of program to design for you. Having that lengthened look will be determined on how much body fat you have and how strong you are. So when I was a professional ballet dancer, I was not as strong as I am today after training with heavy weights. In my ballet days, my muscles were way leaner because I didn't have as much muscle strength in them. So meaning back in my dance days, five pound dumbbells would have been pretty heavy to hoist over my head. Now, 20 pound dumbbell dumbbells are what's challenging for me. It's a different type of strong. So like with yoga, you might be able to balance on your hands, but can you lift up a 50 pound bag of dog food? This comes down to your goals. Using a waist trainer to slim your core. Oh boy, yeah, really, I am shocked that this is a trend. Ironically enough, it's funny because back in the 80s, especially in the dance world, it was all the rage for dancers to wear what we used to call trash bag pants. <laughs> and we used to wear them to ballet class. And the idea was to keep your hips warm so you could be more limber and get a better stretch. And they did that. You know what else they did? They made you sweat you look like you had an accident when you took them off. These waist trainers are advertised that you're going to lose inches super fast. They just remove water. They make you sweat. You know what happens when you drink water again? Yeah, all those inches you thought you lost, they come back. And before you think, well, I'll just not drink water, you will soon find yourself in the hospital for dehydration, which is something you do not want to go through. Okay, next one, pairing exercise with booze. I have some clients who can do without alcohol 
And then I have some clients who fit it into their lifestyle. If you want to have a celebratory drink after you ran a race, great. But what isn't healthy is drinking while you're exercising. This is not a good combination. So when you're asked to go to those classes like yoga and wine at the same time or something like that, not only are you not as coordinated, but your circulatory system is so busy trying to pump out the alcohol that it could put an extra strain on your heart. So just be cautious when you're going into situations like that. And the last one is taking heated cardio classes. Cardio heats up the body naturally. Why on earth would you want to add more heat? You are just sweating more or possibly setting yourself up for dehydration or worse, heat stroke. You do not need to be drenched with sweat to get a great workout. So there you have it. Those are the 10 fitness trends to ditch. I hope this was helpful for you. There are many fads and trends out there, and honestly, it always boils down to the basics. If you enjoyed this podcast and you're interested in finding out why you're really stuck and you just can't lose the weight, I want to invite you to schedule a phone consult with me. It's absolutely free. You can go to shapeitupfitness.com slash chat, C-H-A-T, and go ahead and request a consult today. All right, that is all for me today. And again, check out TEDx coming soon in October and the link will be in the show notes and have a wonderful week and I will talk to you next week.